Yeah, we got like one more minute. How you like in that uh, arc game? It's addicting. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. I went yeah. over to my friend's house uh, this weekend. He has it, and uh, it looks pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I, I want to bring that up today too. Buddy joined your channel. Buddy joined your channel. Ta da! What's up? Sorry. Can you enter all of the channels that you go into like that? Just be like, ta-da! <laughs> Maybe. I'm not a very social guy, as you can see. Right, I'm about to drag those people up here. Do it. Just go down there and be like, get your, your asses up. Buddy oh, was hustling moved to your channel. Oh, it User was moved to your channel. User was moved to your channel. Is it going right. to say that every time somebody enters the room? Yeah. You can turn that off, though. Let me find this Google Docs I have. You can also make it do something else. I don't remember what it was, but Trash Boat and uh, Grace and G-Man were dicking around with it one day. Do uh, <laughs> we have to open up Google Docs? Because last time we really didn't do anything with it. We always do stuff with it. And plus, I have a lot written in there now, today. I wonder who I get to be now. I'm gonna be the tiger? Or the rabbit? What kind of symbol is that? Oh, you're an orangutan. Who am I, Sal? You're an orangutan. God damn it. <laughs> well, Alan's a badger. That's nice. I believe I'm actually a wombat. Are you? It's just like you typed your name yeah, up there, right? Yeah, a wombat. Did you type your name? Or did someone else type your name? Yeah, I typed my name. It said badger for me, at least. Why not change it to your name? There, I should be me now. Here, while we're waiting, I guess for anybody else to show up, go and uh, take a look at that PV bootcamp thing, because it has a lot of stuff that you guys can just, like, type in. Ketter, you're the cheetah. Oh wait, actually, you're the giraffe? Somebody's a giraffe. 
with the dark pink is a giraffe. That ain't me. <laughs> I don't even know how to see. How do you add a little bubble thing? Er, er, um, type underneath uh, Shalom's name. Just hit interact with his name. Does it not do it for you? Uh, are you yeah. hitting shift or are you just hitting enter? There we go. You try and do it alphabetical. <laughs> All right, I think everyone's pretty much signed the name down, but uh, let's go ahead and start talking about PVV boot camps. Uh, about how many have we had this month, or last month? Well, we missed Sunday, because I overslept, so I didn't get to host it. <laughs> as far as um, I'm aware, we've only had two. No, we've had three. There's three? Yeah, we had three. Or did we only have two? I thought we had three. We had the first one, and then we had the one where we got yelled at, and then we had the one after that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Why did you get what you yelled at? Because we were hosting PvP boot camp during the turn of the, um, uh, turn of the map when the campaign reset and we got yelled at by Monkey and Pact Arbiter because we were quote unquote taking all the good players, which wasn't a thing because really nobody except noobs showed up. So if anything, we were strengthening the alliance yeah. by teaching them. Uh, whatever we do, somebody will complain. We gotta remember that we did slate it to try to be at the end of the campaign so we can get as much of a head start on the next one as we can. Eh, uh, no one's ever gonna... Not everyone's ever gonna be happy. Yeah. There you go. Uh, who else has uh, attended a PvP boot camp last month? I did. I have not. Nope. I just, um, here. Whoever's attended one, go on, uh, where I've highlighted, go and put your name down so I can get a listing of that. Anonymous Monkey. And if you still need to attend one, go ahead and post your name below. People who um, are not here did attend. Do you want me to put their names down? Uh, yeah, if you remember who's all done that, yeah. I yeah, attended, I I attended oh, one. Cool. If someone, I can't get on Google Docs. So can someone mark me down? You can't get on Google Docs?
All right. Uh, well, since I've really only attended one uh, PV boot camp, I'm not really sure if I can like talk about it much. But uh, let's just talk about PV boot camps and how they've been doing. They're still very new. Well, for the most part, we've been getting a lot of really good feedback from um, the fact that there's a lot of different people coming together, being able to analyze and, and talk about uh, the different tactics on where to stand, where to siege, you know, where to take down a wall, because a lot of the stuff in the chaos gets kind of lost in translation, but being able to point out reasons why we do something to people who are new uh, has really opened them up a lot. And then when I finish with the boot camp, I typically take that crew that I just trained and we go take something or we go assist the Zerg and they perform much better. Um, they're kind of on top of crown, they're putting down siege, they're already running between one or two sieges, um, they have, because I give like a goodie basket at the end of like potions and, um, sometimes food, sometimes siege, and like 15 soul gems each, because they're super easy to farm. So I'll give them the soul gems and they actually are utilizing them and, and being quick about it, uh, staying on their feet, working as a team, using synergies, all things that we hope you know, randoms would be able to do, but with the actual, without, with pointing them out, it just kind of clicked in their heads, so. And we have yeah. a lot of people who are interested in actually participating, too, when you'll be, like, you'll see it in guild chat, and they'll be like, is there a boot camp running? Well, who's doing boot camp? So. Yeah, and that's another thing, like, I really want to um, utilize this PvP boot camp sign-up thread. We need more organization with this, I think. Like, cause uh, I know you're keeping lists of it, Aelin, but like, I don't know where these lists are. And I, I can't see them or anything. So it's just like really confusing to me, at least. I put them in, um, I make a thread about it and then I'll put the screen capture, like that I did that one time. I'll put the yeah. screen capture of who attended so that you can see like each member. All right, sweet. Do you guys do this thing early during the day? We can change the time frame. I've been doing them at 4 because during the weekdays I work and 4 o'clock is easy enough that I can get finished, get something to eat, and then sit on game and, and uh, hold, the, hold the event. But if somebody's holding it at a different time, that'd be awesome. That was uh, 4 Pacific. <laughs> I know that Rand has actually been running them in the late night to teach the people who are online in the middle of the night and stuff. So Has he? Yeah, he's actually been taking my... Google Doc and teaching them all the Ooh. things. Yeah, Ren's been stepping up a lot. Wait, so are you not the only one who's actually been, like, hosting hosting? So no, like... Rand hosts his own. I've not attended any of his, but Rand okay. hosts his own. And I've seen an improvement in his players in the evening. That's awesome. So everyone else has attended joined your PV boot camps. Uh, how, what do you think of them? I think they're really very informative, and and there's something that good good to do for new people, new players. I've been to a couple of them. For the most part, it's a good idea. It's just we need to start. I don't know, like advertising earlier, advertising throughout the week ahead of time or something. That way we can possibly have more going or more new people. Yeah, I agree with that. And then maybe like on the dock there's the combat boot camp thing. Like maybe we could try to run them both at the same time. If like there's enough people, like one group say they are more interested in learning how to fight, we could bring in, I don't know, other people's alts like from DC AD try to teach them how to dodge stuff, how to predict something, then have the other group try to learn try to learn siege so we don't get mixed up like that way. Ooh, no, that's something I wanna bring up, but I'll bring up later like a uh, creating um like A D or D C characters for like dueling, training our own people. But I think uh the duelist guild pretty much have that covered though. Might be uh, beneficial to like uh, actually formally, you know, get a sister guild, sister dueling guild. That might be a thing that we could do. That I think could be helpful with the combat there. thing. Yeah. I think we can put it out there, but I don't know if we should make it mandatory. Well, not mandatory, no. Okay. Like a, 
these uh, combat boot camps is what I, what I thought of. Um, so we have our PvP boot camps. They basically cover uh, where you need to be, um, where to place your siege. It's, it's all about where. But um, combat boot camps, like uh, basically dueling, but you know, animation. I think canceling. people need to learn that, that shit on their own. To be honest, I think it like, would pair really well with like Theorycraft Thursday because then you can yeah. talk about builds and and how to rotate. There's a thing though, if you if you're gonna teach people how to manage or control individual mechanics and whatnot, you don't have a guarantee that the person is gonna stay a non-vet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. I honestly believe that if you guys want to teach someone how to serg and how to take keeps and how to place a defensive position and whatnot, that would be cool, but uh, teaching every single person individual mechanics, like when to block, when to interrupt, I don't when think it to needs break to get that extreme. It's just sometimes you see people hitting keeps with a fucking meat bag, you know? No, <laughs> but that's not I mean, combat. one thing is siege, though. One thing is serg tactics or group tactics, all right? That's actually great that we're doing that. But when it comes to individual tactics and mechanics, like if you were fighting alone against someone, I think that's something that... That comes with practice. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, people need to earn with practice or hanging out on their own because you will never know if the person is actually going to stay a non-vet. And if it doesn't stay, you actually waste your time. And you could have been doing something else. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a waste of time, but, um, Aelin, do you, do you, uh, teach, like, Zerg balling? Like, uh, for example, yesterday I was leading a group and, uh, we were out in this field, just all of us out in this field, we were so spread out. I kept telling them to get on crown so they can just Zerg ball them, but, like, none of them I would get don't, on crown. I uh, don't, mostly because I teach tactics that are things like, you know, um, what to look for inside of a keep and yeah. how to hold. I teach like tricks and tips, like how to use talons and stuff at the breach to hold people so oils will hit them. Working as a team on sieging or taking keeps and then also defending. And and then I teach also like very basic stuff, like here's how to use a way shrine because there's a lot of people who still run from one place to another instead of utilizing their way shrine. There? Yeah, there's also people who are all like, how do I teleport out of bleakers? All the time. Oh my god, guys, the thing's broken. Yeah. Hey, almost everyone has been in that point before, so don't laugh at that. Right. No, no, no. I mean, that's the thing is that it's, but it's a common thing that continues to happen. I'm, I'm like always whispering people who's in zone saying, "How do I get out of PvP?" Simple things that I think that everybody would know, I just overlook. Um, but is there anything that we could, uh, add to PvP boot camp? PvP like, boot camp, when I run it, it's about an hour and a half to get all the information yeah. out. So I really don't want to add more things to it. Maybe having, like, a different style session or something. But if you add more, it's going to be to the point where patience is really losing. Game it, Pumpkin. What are you doing? Oh, you can just divide it on sessions. Yeah. Right, so any content that would be added, if it's not pertaining to, like, Siege and Keeps or whatever, like, if you want to teach a Zerg balling tactics, I think we could probably do Zerg ball and field combat as one, maybe? You can probably use a Siege War for, I mean, a uh, Bridge War for that. Yeah. Like, try to provoke a uh, Bridge War in Alicia, for example, and, and take the people there with you without sieging. I mean, yeah. Um, what about, uh, I think you've pretty much got it down to everything you need, but is there anything that, that could be removed? Or anything that we don't need? You. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I tried to make it as succinct as possible with the information yeah. that people ask questions on. Um, 
Okay. Um, but then um, one thing I noticed that whenever I was in your PvP boot camp that you were talking like all the time. That's good. But I don't, I don't think you were talking so much. There was so much information and I'm not sure if all of them are like absorbing it correctly. Um, but maybe we can like involve the group more. It may take a little bit more time. Like saying, hey, you random person, go place the siege, you know, three siege up top of the tower. Well, they, the up there. what do you mean? Like involving the players? Yeah, involving the players. So like they're actually doing things, you know, like, you know, in a, I feel, in a classroom, and, a yeah. teacher will well, involve Well, I feel like a lot of that will then end up adding to the time frame, which yeah, people complain that it's already too long as it is. So really? when I run through it, what I have is like Keru and Seafowl, when they were with me, they would run through and put down the siege as I was talking to demonstrate and show yeah. what was going on. But for the most part, they're able to engage and we take the tactics that we learn and we utilize them afterward in a group so that we can do, we can perform them real time. So rather than set, having everybody set up and do it, and then, okay, great, you've done it, now put take it down. Like, I, I don't need proof. They're supposedly adults or teenagers, so I don't need them to show me their work, essentially. I need them to grab the information, you know, retain it, and then process it when we're out on the field. Well, yeah, you do take them out afterwards, don't you, right? Yeah. Uh, I think they've been really informative and, and are a really good idea. Oh yeah, they're they're really really informative. I'm just afraid it's too I much just information. I think more of these fucking time. officers should spend more goddamn time on the game if they want to stay officers. Yeah. Because half the time there's only like three or four of us on anymore. Uh, I was like really sad the other day. I looked at the uh, roster, and uh, at, there's a few tribunal members that weren't online for like over a week. That's why I think we promoted too many people to officers right out of the gate, like with them just playing for a couple of months. I mean, I know they were good players and all, but you know what I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel ya. Well, and then there's people like Rand and, and Vavik who are picking up a lot of the slack in Guild, but then aren't getting any type of the permissions or responsibilities to be able to do anything about it. Hmm. What do you mean by that? That was my event of the evening. I'm done now. I mean, like, Vavik's in there and he's socially triaging sets of information. There was a point in time where fights break out between people and mm -hmm. he's in there kind of playing middleman and, and doing what officers are supposed to do, you know, and assist in keeping guild peace for the most part. And he's not an officer. But he's picking up the slack of one. Right. I guess. I guess the question I had was about what permission does he need? No, it's just like the title for the got respectability it. for it, and then also like permissions in team speak. Got he's it. got those. He's a speaker. Okay. Good. <laughs> what about Rand though? I mean, he's in the no, same boat. He's not, but he should apply. I keep encouraging everybody to apply. Well, what's the point in applying if nobody goes on and does anything with the forms? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All those. Oh, I need to cancel a bunch of those applications, too. A lot of them are over two weeks old. Um, let's keep Other talking than... about... Uh... Have, you, have you considered... Um, so, the my problem with the form is that... So, you know that I don't apply for this thing for the longest time. And in fact, when I applied, my, my character just batted out. So it's exactly the worst time to apply. And the problem with the form is that it feels that the right thing to do would be for you guys on this meeting to just make recommendations. And then you ask the person whether he wants to do it rather than the other way around. Because the other way around, you know, you're encouraging not the right set of people to apply potentially. And it's also a lot more paperwork than, than there should really be for this thing. Yeah, like there's people that I do want to promote, but they don't want to have to sit down and fill out the paperwork um, and it's tedious to them or it's something that they feel like they're they're in and they're participating and they're doing stuff. Why aren't they just, you know, recommended for a promotion? 
I think the lower level promotions should have to do it on the site, but the higher sure, level yeah. promotions shouldn't. That's I just my opinion. I, I like I like the forums just because of organizational purposes, though. Yeah, like that's I'm, true. I'm a very organized person. <laughs> So I just, I just like my organization. Well, you could okay, fill then the maybe for them. it just shouldn't be a hundred percent mandatory, but preferred. Maybe you can condense the amount of information they have to fill out on the form. I mean, if you if you're talking about organization, you have meeting notes here, and that seems super organized to me already. And this is coming from someone who is super unorganized, so. I guess <laughs> that might not say much, but I thought the meeting notes is like, oh my god, this who who wrote meeting notes for like a, a guild meeting? That's amazing. I don't know. I think if people want to be a officer bad enough, they'll go fill out the fucking form. On the other I mean, hand, on the other hand, is the one that like I mean. A lot of people who you say are good but are not filling forms doesn't mean that they shouldn't be an officer, right? No. Like, Aether's really good and he's been helping a lot with keeping the Zerg together and stuff, but he doesn't want to fill out a form because. Yeah, you know, like that point Orcock, it just kind of deters him. He or says, Orcock, too. He says, I ain't filling out no fucking form. If you guys think I should be an officer, you can make me an officer. That's pretty much the the whole. Machete feels the same way. Um, trying to think who else is that way. I've played with Machete a few times, and he's really good. I would have no problem recommending him for anything. Uh, then let's uh, utilize the the admin forms. And if you believe someone needs to be promoted, go ahead and post them there. I, I read the forms like every day. If we get like you know three recommendations or whatever they need, I'll, I think that could be fine. That way, I still have some sort of documentation of it. That seems reasonable to me. Yep, sounds good. I guess the point. My point was just that it should be on. Also on our part to make sure that we get the right blood to the stream, rather than always on you know the other guy's part. So yeah, if the work is on us, I think that's fine, and we want them promoted. So. Mm -hmm. On the note of promotions. What about Rudder? Why did he end up with a month of not hearing about his hand of sofa? Um, did he apply for hand of sofa? Yep. Yeah. What? Salandra was supposed to talk to him about it. It's not just that, but like a. I don't know, it was a whole situation. Um, like I, I, want, I wanted more people up in hand of sofa, right? But then, uh, Cosner was supposed to be coming back, too. I think something else happened with him, I'm not really sure. Uh, the big situation there. So this is also my, my kind of worries whenever I see forms, is that... Um, uh, when... I don't know. It's... It, I'm not saying rather is one, but I'm, I'm, um, this is one, one of the worries I always have with forms, and this is... This is at work. It happens often that when you want someone to do something and you're asking for volunteers, you don't get the right people to do it. Yeah, it and does happen always, all the time. Yeah, that always worries me whenever I see forums because it's the same thing. You know, you're asking people um, to recommend themselves. And then now the outcome is if the right people apply, great. If the wrong people apply, well, you, you, you're in a bind now. You have to talk to them. You have to make sure that you know they understand that they don't, they are not, they don't deserve it yet, but in a way that don't make them feel like shit, or make them quit. I'm not saying this is the case with Rudder. I have no idea what happened there. With Rudder, it was a lack of communication. There was a decision that was made, but didn't get communicated to him. 
Right. Sometimes it's difficult to relay information. Well, it's also yeah, the same it's, case it's really with a hard. lot of the of the lot of the forms that are pending right now like those we have a discussion going on on the admin thread but has anybody well, maybe volunteered should, to maybe tell you somebody make me the, maybe you should make me the person to reject shit <laughs> no. i think i think that'll be really bad <laughs> no way man <laughs> Why? i knew you well enough I, you're I gonna know. punch him in the dick with your words <laughs> i wouldn't i tell them how they can improve and and then listen, the you're gonna be like this. You're gonna be like, listen, you people. suck. At all over. You just suck. You and that's fucking why you're suck. Not... You need to fucking. Let's make Monkey the person to reject him while we're at it. Oh, God. I hey, get it's not that bad. By a Canadian I accent. <laughs> get a glass yeah, but he's and a get burly good. Canadian accent. It actually has to come from someone that has enough leadership to do that. Mm -hmm. And enough soft skills because. Lugrim! Yeah. How about Lugrim? Well, Salagra, so, uh, what do you think about all this? Oh, come on. Lugrim, like... you would be perfect. No, if Lugrim. our Raptor comes at me and tells me, Ha, you suck, then I'm gonna be like, Your would... mom. <laughs> What's Lugrim gonna do? Cuddle him to death? <laughs> Rudder would have been good for that, too. I mean, also, he'd have been what... hardcore, though, that's the problem. What what's the way you guys want to take the guild into right now? Because I've been asking people lately in another subject, and I see people doesn't play or people just goes into their own groups and uh, I don't know. You guys got tired of Blackwater Blade or something? What? Um, me? I want to play an IT. That's why I'm leveling this alt like crazy right now. And I don't know what you guys are planning to do with IT, but we probably should talk about that soon because. That's coming up, and that's totally new, and a lot of people like new, new and shiny, including myself. What the heck are we yeah. going to do with that? With this what? With what? Yeah. I see. Imperial City. Imperial ah. City. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a tune ready for the Imperial City, a mage blade. Yeah, I'm trying to prepare this one too. I'm like, I have most of my gear ready except for Ben of Serial Light, because my AP is stuck on a level 49 character. Fucking irritating. Oh no! Yeah, apparently you can't buy a V14 version of Ben of Zero Light unless you are VR14. And I have 490k AP on that alt. Can you do an AP swap, maybe? Find someone who's a V14, ask them to buy it for you? But I can't, I can't give them my no, AP. Is it bound? You, you, is it you bound? cannot trade AP. Yeah, that's the problem. No, no, no. You can't, you don't, you I don't, don't even trade AP, think it... but you trade resources. So you'd say, okay, you... I'll buy it from you. I'll spend whatever 100 repair kits per... Oh, or you spend or something, fun. and you then can, you give uh, them the you item. You can sell the band of serials, like it's not bind on buy. Is you it? do. It's not. It's ninety k at least right now. I don't know. I'm just saying, use yeah. your use your AP as a currency. Yeah, oh, I've well. got Trade. a ton of AP on one of my vet tunes. I think I've got four, five, six hundred k. Oh wow. Okay, then I might I might talk to you later. But let me check. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm pretty sure yeah. I do though. Yeah, I have I have my my combined AP among all of my characters is at least five something, but it's just yeah, I've got that... three tunes with over three hundred gear right now because all I do is gank and never spend any. Yeah, same here. Um, but yeah, uh, ganking inside PvP is fucking tough. Oh, so another thing I want to talk about is, uh, JT suggested to me that, um, in Blackwater Blade, we need to be talking in zone. Although we're all freaking paranoid as fuck it's about spies. But, um... I don't get all the paranoia about spies. Yeah, I, yeah the yeah, most I terrorizing it, people. But, yeah. It's I think a lot silly. of people get so stupid and salty, and whenever somebody says something about spies, unless we're joking, like, you know, somebody <laughs> said something stupid and we're all like, spy, ah! um, I typically explain, like, you know, everybody's like, how did they know we were going to be there? I was like, look at the map. That's literally the only place that they can go. 
You I know? mean, the only time you have to worry about spies is if you're getting a scroll back or something like that, where you're skipping a couple of keeps, maybe. And they're going to keep people in stealth the way we keep people in stealth. They're using the same tactics we are. It's only on rare occasions where, like, Pastel Guts will message me and be like, there's nobody at Aleswell. And I was like, I know, because they're all at Bleakers. But, yeah, JT has told me that, um, like, D DC uses their zone to tell everybody where they're going to be at, which group they're going to be where. Every, every group is coordinating together, and that, I, that's something that AP is really lacking on. Well, we coordinate together. I mean, we've been able to coordinate with SR and, and well, when sometimes. CW. The problem is, is we end up absorbing them. So people will go and, uh, like, you know, uh, what was it? C whatever the the CS clans Farker yeah. was was operating in coordination with us and then ended up we ended up just absorbing them in and a lot of the players from SR become absorbed into our group as well. Well I don't I don't mean like, you know, Zerg balling it. I mean like uh No, I'm they, saying like they um, come over and they join our guild and then they're running under uh, the EMP tag so we don't have to coordinate with anybody because that group no longer exists. That type of thing. But most of the time, Bells of War is on, and we coordinate with him when, you know, he's running a group, and there's yeah. people who call for, there's an, other people who will call in and say, hey, there's, you know, all the leaders message me, and I'll message them, and they'll coordinate whatever push, blah, blah, blah and say, how many you have, can you take your group here, and we'll organize together. Sometimes we do it in Whisper, just because it's a lot easier to coordinate between the leaders and talk about like a plan of action versus having a bunch of other people like jump in and be like, you know what I think? And then it gets all lost in translation because EP is very vocal. So you not think a uh, zone is the best place to do that? I think if EP calms the fuck down maybe, but like even like moments when Titus is in there just hamming it up, it's difficult to get communication across or when Tank and Spank is busy yelling at somebody, communication gets completely lost. It becomes, you know, a uh, huge spam. So zone could be okay. Like Kerry said, zone could be okay, but zone can get trolly or salty. In which case, right then and there, it's not okay to use anymore because you can't get communication across from group to group, and people just want to get in and start being like, you know, you guys should hit hit the south, hit the south. But I've used zone chat when it's uh, when I need you know, a shitload of people up north, and I'm like, nobody should be hitting Alessia, because we all have to be pushing on DC to, you know, dethrone this emperor, um, and then fights break out, and it turns into, like, a huge, huge war, so zone chat is probably not the best way to communicate. Plus, you can't compare For various DC other reasons, to not spy. And DC runs vet search. Yeah, DC has way, way, way and... better players than we oh, do as a I hope to be those better players. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't matter what they type on the sound chat. They just run as a vet. That's what they do. They probably run it in guild, so. Let's see. What, no, what I want to do is become they, they run a things vet differently guild in Black than you guys. Boys. And that's why I was... Then we have to start getting uh, way more strict on A, who we yeah. allow in, who we allow up, and who we're running with in groups. I was talking that. with uh, Kiowen the other day, and I told her that you can tell that people get frustrated going against DC, for example. Because most of the times you guys wipe, unless you're out serving someone. All right? But the reason why sometimes the circ the EP cert doesn't work out. It's because it's not made of bad players, just like DC. So if you guys want to beat up a vet cert, then you might start using another different tactic. We hope we can achieve that through the PvP boot camps, though. Yeah, but what you're asking for requires us to be more exclusive and have. No, it just so. requires like. Well, you know, Aelin is a leader, and Silander is another leader, and other people is leader too will get more strict with uh with being on ground and being dark or being white and then being like okay you guys don't fucking move until i do you guys move on me and that's just it need obedience. The, uh, <laughs> having them in team speak also uh, helps of course and you should probably make ts mandatory 
for I was the people saying, that is All here I'm group. saying is that if you want us to run like a well-oiled machine, then we can't have new cogs being entered into the machine each year or mm -hmm. uh, each each day because we well, got new people coming in and then people who don't use TS and then we have echoes, but sometimes there's more than one echo and then things get lost. I mean, there's so many different factors that play into it that can't keep the machine well organized. Can we do this with STS? Well, I'm just saying, look at the amount of people we have in our mating right now. All right, how many? Three, no, no. six, twelve. nine, twelve. You got half a raid over here on TS. All right? So, plus the amount of people that usually comes in TS with you guys. If you guys can get a solid group with this 20 that knows what they're doing, know where you need to step out, know when you need to wrap it, and shit that has, like, it's basic. But, if you put on top of that another tactic or something like uh, one of the few things DC does, which is like stack on the, not where you guys stack before you go in inside a keep, but they stack on the side. And why they stack on the side? Because that side is not reachable by oils or siege weapons. All right, there's some few things that I see them doing and you guys don't do it, but mostly because, yeah. There's new players, like Alien says, and there's not enough coordination to do that, but if you get a solid group of people here, with the people in guild, then I think you can take a 24-man group and take whatever the hell you want. So the, the, key, the key thing here that is that's very interesting is that um, there's at least one type of bad mistake for, for new players which is pulling guards, for example, that is like, basically you're screwing the entire Zerg, not just yourself. Any other type of mystics is actually okay. Any type of mystic that doesn't actually screw the Zerg, if they die, they die, that's fine. You know, if they spread out, but they don't pull guards, that's okay. So as long as people understand that one single basic thing, don't screw up the Zerg. If you have 24 people, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna be able to successfully take a keep. Because, you know, you have... 36 people and 12 of them don't listen to you and 12 of them just go run around and die. You still have 24 people going up the keep. You still have 24 people with two guys with rapid maneuver, with three guys with perch or efficient perch, which obviously no one has nowadays. Um, you'll be good. So the key is, the problem I think is not, is somehow making sure that people know what are the few things. Like I only know one, which is pulling, pulling guards. Anything else, it's minor to me. Well, the, I know that if you pull guards at a certain point, they'll rubber band back, but a lot of people just sit there and like start attacking the guards, and you're like, yeah. I can't tell you the amount of times where I'm like, don't attack them, they'll rubber band back if you come to where I'm telling you to go. Yep. You know? Yep. And in the meantime, then they're dying at the breach because they're busy attacking instead of fucking running where I'm telling them. Yeah. And, and how do you fix that? Just run in a tie group. No, yep. yeah, you kick them because they're not up to snuff right now and they're not tight enough. Well, I'm just like, saying what you guys can do to provoke a fact tight enough. that makes, Thanks, makes players want to come play with you. If you guys yeah. get a group going, a very organized group that knows where to stand, when to go in, when to get out, knows to focus a player and not be randomly shooting arrows everywhere, People's gonna see that shit on you, and they're yeah. gonna be like, "Oh, these guys are badass! I want to join them." People right, stay alive join a lot better when they run tighter, exactly. and then they they right. are happier, so they'll stay in your group longer. Right. Exactly. And if they see that kind of shit, they're gonna be like, "Oh, this group is badass! I might as well want to join them." And the best and part they're gonna is, ask you for a slot. The best and part that's is, where you, yeah, yeah. The best part is, you know, they might start bad, and then they see you guys doing this thing, and they don't understand why, but they see that you're successful doing it. So they'll be like, oh, okay, so they're doing something for a reason. Whereas right now, whenever I see a Zerg, I just see headless chickens. Literally, <laughs> the, whole, the, whole, the whole lawn, uh, yard, or whatever they call it, is filled with people running around. I don't know what they're doing. And no one is pushing up the stairs. And this might not be an M Zerg, because I haven't been an M Zerg in a long time, because I've been ganking on my last... Um, Black Waterblade character. 
So I don't know how MSERC operates, but the few CERCs I see in Black Water Blade, whenever I try to like look in, look well, around the keep, it's very bad. I know bad. that there's been a lot of negative feedback for Bells of Wars, and I haven't had the opportunity to be in his group the way I was with Cheese Block, but he does. There's just so many complaints about how he leads poorly. So a lot of players get frustrated with his leading, and then they come in thinking we're leading the same way. I bet. Well, the only way to hey, show I was someone the, uh, that you're I good at, that you're good at leading is by success. If you guys what success, were you say, Bjorn? doing something. Yeah. I was just gonna um, say I was in dessert yesterday, and I thought we did a pretty good job. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we had a shitload of officers online. That's I'm always thing. online. You and me, Bjorn. But I mean, that's the thing is that it's one of it's just frustrating that you know I go to lead a zerg of like all new all new players and maybe I... two officers, three tops, and Bjorn don't even because you've left my group several times and come back or left or come back, and then it's like, Bjorn, can I count on you? Are you there? And then you're like, Hey, sorry guys, I had to do some stuff. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joshing you, man, but... Don't put me on the you know. spot like that. <laughs> just kidding. I do that, too. <laughs> I yeah. hate it, though, when or I'm in when the you're Zerg. like, oh, I've got no soul gems. I promise I'll bring more next time. I went and I bought a whole ton <laughs> yesterday, but I've used most of them up already. I only have 17 left. I know you left. have. <laughs> uh, but, anyway, I think leaning a Zerg, you need to explain I'm gonna go buy a lot a more things. I'm going to go buy I think a lot of people are logical people and they won't do anything unless you give them a reason. Well, this then, is the thing. But that's the problem. Yeah. If you lead someone, all right, let's just say that you get a 24-man group and you have half a group that knows what they're doing and knows where to, where to follow you and when to follow you and when to go with you. Why not? As long as they follow you, other people's going to see that. And that's how you also so teach them how to do stuff. So another thing to improve is I don't know I don't know um, is to make adapt actually really mean adapt when we when we see an adapt um, in 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 a in a roster it means someone who will be on team speak team speak who will follow crown I don't know whether that's the case right now that should be the case is somebody not doing that I don't know so I'm just asking because I haven't been in Zerk in a long time. <laughs> I mean, now there's a boot camp, right? But before this, it was just a series of questions. Yeah, we've improved the the requirements to be an adept because we had people who were being promoted that uh, did not have skill sets available. Mm -hmm. So that's good. All I'm saying is, we originally were a guild where we were gonna run with and have pugs and pick up the pugs and bring them in and you know hold their hand. And you can't have both. You you can't have both sets of of uh, styles. Like you can't have a very like strict. Only this is how EMP runs, and we get shit done, and blah blah blah. And then have like the kindergarten sandbox with like a bunch of toddlers running around <laughs> with shit up their noses. Well, I think it comes to how much you guys want to win. Well, EP much... needs us to win. Yeah, and how much individually. Each one of you guys want to win. I, I like. think that's not that's not it though. I think even worse than that, it's not about winning. It's not about just winning. It's about happiness. Because yeah. unfortunately, when you're losing, you, you you'll be like, "This is shit. I don't like playing here because we always lose." That's that's a problem. And yes, it's associated with winning, but it's you know you don't you don't need to always win all the time. You just need to win enough. Keep the time. morale high. Yeah. Like if you lose the entire map, oh my god! You know that week I went online. Like yeah, but you know it's different when you lose map. an entire map doing nothing, than when you lose an entire map actually trying. Yeah. Well, or like when we tried desperately to like dethrone an emperor and we hit our head against AL twelve for the next twelve hours, and you know you're losing oh players, god. gain players. It's it's hell. It's hell and a half. And people get really frustrated at you, and then people are yelling in zone or yelling at you. So there's, 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 maybe you should brainstorm a way to do this. I could think of one way, but I don't know whether it's the best way to do this. Um, you need to, um, if you can mobilize, like, usually you don't need this when, when everything is good, you know, accept any players, just have fun, enjoy the game together. 
But whenever you have this like really bad shitty day, is there a way to mobilize enough people? By enough people, I mean people who know what they're doing to actually help. And the problem well, is the like people... water blade. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Go, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, say damn it. Go on, <laughs> go on, Aileen. You got okay. the, you got the forum. The people that know what they're doing aren't on they're not either they're not on or they're doing something different they're you know playing in their own groups or they're playing in um you know and sometimes the personal groups are effective like when i run my group um and i run a love den group late at night it's effective we get shit done and i'm very exclusive on who's allowed to be in it because i don't want to sit there and res noobs like i do with the zerg right so that shit does work um but there's not enough people uh, with enough skill set to be up there doing stuff and working and operating and moving around the map because all we have are newer players, you know, or players that are casual or sit around and, you know, are looking for sky shards or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what else we could do. I mean, yeah, another thing is it's Blackwater Blade. You know, the, uh, my expectation of Blackwater Blade is obviously a lot lower. Well, the problem is, though, is you got to take into account that we don't always have a big number of people to choose from. That was my point. That I'm... the people who would be worthwhile to bring back the map's livelihood are not participating or, or not demoralize as And even if I were to call into, like, guild chat and be, like, calling all able body players, we need your help, we're on the final stretch, and get, like, maybe two people show up, certainly not any of the officers. I always show up. I, Bjorn, I know. <laughs> well, if it makes you all feel better about all the issues that you guys have, you guys have till 28 August. To fix and then all it's all going to change. <laughs> because everything, no, no, because everything is going to be different when it comes to game damage and builds well, and, and we have to get better water. at taking back Chowman because if we don't have Chowman, uh, or if we don't have our home keeps, we're not getting into Imperial City. Oh and the game's going to be a lot more noob friendly because everyone's going to be doing quite a bit less damage. Everybody's going to be doing 50% less damage. Uh, 50 right? yeah. fucking percent. Really? They, might, they might be tweaking that number a little bit. They have to because you can't 1vx. I played Vet yesterday on PTS. Another thing is uh, I've actually been telling people a lot over the last few months to go to vet, go get some champion points, see how she works. And some people actually did it lately, which I think it's amazing because they get to try a part of the game they haven't yet. And if you guys want, you know, I got, you guys, I'm a member of SWP on a sewer star and children. If you guys want, I can take one or two of you to, uh, Veteran Zerg. It's a very strict and organized Veteran Zerg. If you guys want to see how it works, what do they do? And then bring the tactics here. I'd be interested. You and I will talk, Tori. Alright. Keru makes a very uh, good point. We had a huge fight break out while y'all were playing Ark. And it was between a lot of people in our house, Sotha chat, in uh, in guild chat. And there was a lot of shit slinging between her and, uh, a lot and of the, the rest of the guild. And people who don't understand that, you know, we're an all accepting guild. And she talks a lot of shit. And I told her, I was like, you have to watch what you say when you say it because... Our morale's already pretty low from getting our asses handed to us by DC, and then you're on your DC character slinging mud right at us. It's inappropriate. Was she slinging mud? Yeah. Oh, she always does. She always does. Whenever we're at a low point, she always comes in with some snide comment. It's almost guaranteed. And, it, and you've already Why is that person so guilty? Right? And when, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot Zabos of people have been her. asking that question, and we're really kind of concerned about why she is in the guild because there's not. I 
can't, I can't tell you the amount of times where we need her help and she jumps on DC and DC's bashing her face in and she'll be on her DC character and I don't care what she claims. Oh, she likes we're not even for with the, the Zerg. We've killed her several times within the Zerg. So okay, uh, I think I think you guys she's need not to get useful. the fuck out. She's not that's, a useful player. Yeah. Like you she's either tell her like and, and that's the other thing is that when she was in the group with us the other day and she was talking shit like while we were leading a group and you know, yeah, it was really hard. We were up against A D trying to get our scroll back and A D knew we were there. So she's all like, Why aren't you fucking fifty fiftying this? Why can't you it's like what's the point in fifty fifty when we need to flag the keep? Like and in the middle of everybody dying, there was I mean, let's no be point. honest. If it's right, causing I... you any type of a problem and it makes you have to think more than once about it and making you dislike the gameplay, get rid of it. Ta da. I, yeah, I don't know. You um, said, I don't know what you said, kick her, what, whoever she is, I don't know who. Yeah, isn't that the Just give it a big old shoe. I think you could probably tell her, like, yo, it is like this. It is white or black. It is not gray. You can open it for both sides. Kaylin, you've taken her to the side, right? Yeah, I've sat her down, yeah. but she still does it. Okay. She Isn't doesn't that care. the one that was informing DC of what we were doing two weeks yep. ago? Yep. Well, her That's specifically... That's Fuck her, get rid of her. Sure. Because I know there's been a lot of drama with her, but like... I'm I'm in full support of people who are like play other factions. Like that's not a problem. I play my I don't, other yeah, faction too. Yeah, I mean, but you duel on another faction. You don't yeah. drop. You don't drop our faction during a push to go and push on the other side. Oh no, no, never. That's what she does. <laughs> that's the point. She does, and that's and then she the tells problem. them what we're doing. And then yeah. she sits in guild chat and sasses us from the other side, going, you know, hey, did good job on dethroning that emperor. Better luck next time. Or like. Why would you guys want to dethrone the Emperor? He's a super nice guy. To a primarily EP faction. Yeah, guild. she should just go join a duelist guild and chat in there. <laughs> That's exactly my point. Although she won't go duel because she's a piece of shit player. <laughs> oh, oh, she's didn't... awful. Y'all are she's still very, talking about this. Uh, just I think you guys have been... Yeah. That's you way more than I this think too. she's completely harmless all in all. Well, maybe not. No, Some well, people probably... No, that's not harmless, please. She's very harmless. For me, she's she harmless. She ruins, Whatever. ruins the mood of all of chat. And we have so many people who fight with her verbally when I've even told them to ignore. I go find her, laugh at her. That's you, well, but that's not everybody. Yeah. Yeah, if she's ruining the morale of the guild and EP, Good night, Chori. get rid of her. See ya, Chori. Good night. Good night, Chori. Oh, okay, I'll be back later. <laughs> See you later, The Chori has spoken. Yeah, y'all want me to fucking leave. I see her. No, we don't. <laughs> that chore is I a don't. No, we'll I'll just be back about you behind your back later on, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I can't. I honestly can't think of one person who's had a good hey, encounter Chori, and could volley for her to actually continue to be in the guild. That's all I'm saying. I've never had a bad encounter with her. Like, personally. She's too nice. That's because there's 490 people in this guild. Yeah. And she's not going to be able to interact with every single one of them. However,. Everybody who has had an interaction with her has been bad. Just because you don't yeah. contract AIDS doesn't mean Buddy, it's a bad. It's not a bad channel. disease. <laughs> it's <Whoa>. still bad. <laughs> hey, uh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll talk to her and then remove her from the guild. Guys, we need I to have a set run, of consequences on stuff. Yeah, okay. I, w I won't just go straight up and kick her first, but I'll just sit down, and talk with her, and then kick her. I'll be back later, it's fight night, and I don't want to <laughs> miss the card, so I'll be back in probably four hours or so. Okay, doke. Y'all have fun. Catch, Catch you. Later. Catch you later. User right, disconnected um, from your channel. Was, has there been any other drama besides that, like in the past two weeks or so? Just the fact that there's nobody on, and yeah, that's causing that's a lot of heat. And my big thing is that if you guys are going to play another game, that's fine. But then just like you would if you were taking a vacation at work, you got to give your two, you got to put in somebody else to fill your spot or you have to find somebody to fill your responsibilities because otherwise we got five people leading a group of 500. And it's incredibly unfair to the rest of us. It's to the point where we're losing players. It's to the point where I don't even want to do anything because I am so overwhelmed. You thought I was overwhelmed before. It's way worse. Uh, so let's uh talk about that then, like arc in general. So I know a lot of us have been playing. It's, it's not just officers, but it's still a lot of officers. 
but um well it's a lot of the frequent zerg players too like milmer's yeah, down there or cox down there and i'm fine with you guys playing a different game but then tell the guild that you're going we're, that we're taking a guild hiatus the way that havoc's guild did where you guys take a break from you know everything make an announcement make it official so that you don't have guildies who are expecting something of us and we're not fulfilling it or that they're expecting us to lead a zerg and there's only like two people on i mean you guys sat here two weeks ago and bitched up a storm about how nobody was participating and doing what their ranks were designed for and then you all left incredibly ridiculous that we sat through two hours of that shit last two weeks ago and then you all fucking left I don't want to say all of us on all of us play, but... You're right. Seafowl and, you know, Keru and Lucian and me, we stayed. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> arc happened. Evidently, he was just staying, mm. staying too long. And by Arc, it's I'm not sorry. me. It's, it's something no, else. No, not Arc Raptor. That was yeah. just funny. <laughs> Yeah, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, wait, what? Why is uh, the oh, channel I named after me? Club? What? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Uh, but, um, it, we are spending a bit too much time down there. I think we've had our, you know, binge play of a new game. I think it's about time to come back home. <laughs> Well, I don't want to say that people have to play something because oh, I don't yeah. care what you play. Well, you don't have but to then, play, if you're but... holding a position of power, hand it over when you're not playing. Well, you can uh, go ahead and take my position because uh, I like the game Ark, and that's where I plan on being for a while. There you go. Same, to be completely honest. And I'm just getting really busy. Um, I'm a lot more overwhelmed. Yeah, with my college I know schedule you're going up, up to so. college soon. That's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, I'll still be, I'll still definitely be on TeamSpeak, you know. Maybe play some ESO when the PO City drops. I personally need okay. a break from PvP ESO before I fucking kill somebody. So I've been on a break. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Communication for when you guys decide to go on break as officers is really, really helpful. For the rest of us who aren't taking a break because otherwise we can't figure that shit out or we figure it out and it's too late i mean i figured it out last week and it had already been a week out of it and i'm like i don't know where they went oh they might be on tomorrow i have no idea and i'm holding the levy in as it's leaking through all sides it's like a bad press fucking release yeah I'm trying to keep that shit You're bandaged, but correct. you can't I, keep it covered i should have told you and i didn't you're fine I mean, it's nice to know that I can communicate all of this with you in one meeting because I don't want to jump down in the ARC channel and start bitching because I know you guys are having a good time and I want you to have a good time because that's what games are all about. I'm not mad. I'm just <laughs> asking for more help. You're yeah. just disappointed. No, yeah, I'm not I'm not even help. disappointed. I'm just at like there's people that I want to start promoting and I want to get them in because they're playing today. But I don't want them to be the way that Rudder was, where he's practically a martyr for the whole entire situation because he had to leave in order for shit to actually like dawn on people, which is depressing. I don't want people like Rand to leave because he's putting in a shitload of work but then not getting the recognition or, you know, Machete to leave because you know, he's coming in and helping in Blackwater Blade as much as he can, but nothing's actually happening for the for him in the guild. And it's not just him leaving either. There's a bunch of members leaving. Because um, I think they're getting discouraged because they see all of us uh, down like the ARC channel or something, not in the EMP channel as mm -hmm. we usually are. Maybe we should yep. play it on a different team speak sometime then. Uh, well, I don't have a different team speak, but no, um, I have one. Like, uh, my my suggestion would be that um, we hold more events and we attend those certain events, so we get our uh, get our more alpha. Yeah. yeah, because otherwise, it's basically like a a toxic wasteland run by pugs. You yeah. Know? It's like wildlings. They're all just kind of out there running this guild right now, and they've overrun us. 
I feel like I feel like to get more morale up, you don't even have to do stuff in game all the time. You can do stuff like play like Cards Against Humanity and those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, we had, we used to have karaoke nights and stuff like that, and that just got dropped this whole month. Yeah, just to kind of bond with the whole guild. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any of you know who the newer players are, or like a Donlius came back, no and idea he was really excited are. to play, and nobody's there to play with him. The, and the, cue sad music. Um, would everybody be up for if I put more like events in, like more uh, paint the map red weekends, shit like that? Just uh, yeah, if you have yeah. like a scheduled event where you show up for two, three hours or whatever, and then we actually have coordination and activity. Because a lot of the other problem is is that people just kind of jump on and will play casually, and then the map looks like crap, and they'll get off about an hour later. What they don't realize is that if we have a strength in numbers where everybody's on playing at the same time, we can get so much more shit done. And then the map turns because we turned it, not because we're waiting for it to turn. Opinions on that. At the same time, though, I mean, we can sit there with, like, say, DC has 100 people and we have 100 as well. We could honestly probably hold a lot better than if we lost 20 people, like, just because we lost Chalman. Kedu, I'm confused by your point. It was a bad analogy, but whatever. Well, I still want to understand what your point is. <laughs> I'll get back to it later. Okay, no. Alright. I think more events will help alleviate the stresses from the yeah. guild. If we can all make an effort to, you know, attend the events do whatever the fuck you want with your free time, I don't care. But, um, just make an effort to attend the events, you know, get more people involved. I think it'd be happy. Bye, Sean. See you later. Catch y'all later. Wait a minute. Buddy disconnected from your channel. Yeah, well... Before, like, pretty much everyone leaves, um, we also got our Centurion Guardian Hunter Nights coming up. So that's an event to be looking forward to next week. Are there, like, scheduled things that we're supposed to be doing when we're in those groups, or is there, uh, is it just kind of, like, hanging out day? Hanging out, uh, we can, they, they can basically be mini tribunal meetings, too, to talk about shit. If you need to, but generally just a get together. Yeah, if I I can't do that, I'll be at work. I okay. saw that note. Sad we don't have more. My weekday is terrible. Here. My weekday will be terrible. I can only play after nine thirty p.m. PST. That's my oh, standard gosh. time. Oh gosh! Oh shit! Yeah. That's why I always see you online. <laughs> At night, yep. Yep. Yeah, you're all like, nocturnal and shit. Oh, something else I wanted to talk about is uh, Engines, our website's uh, award system. Thought it'd be uh, pretty nifty to encourage more members, including you guys. To uh, do certain shit, we could like award members for like uh, leading an EMP group or uh, even taking Emperor. You know, stupid shit like that. But uh, I think it encourages oh. more people. You know, like what? next we're gonna be giving people cake for tying their shoes. Well, hold on, hold no. on one second. This is actually a good idea. So, um, um, I'm in another guild that does both PvE and PvP and on web servers, and what they do is they have officers. And officers have their responsibilities, but they also have um, PvP ranks. Yeah. Which is literally just you know if you if you come in you know three times three times in two weeks you get you know a PvP rank foo, and if you if we see you doing above and beyond you get another PvP rank that's different. 
but there's no there's no uh, responsibility that comes with it other than you know to maintain that rank you just have to do a b c yeah you get, get a nice little gold star on your freaking yeah profile. yeah yeah and it's 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 a lot less like this this is why in the first place like the only position that kind of like i i kind of like feel that i can apply in this in this is like hunter because i don't lead group and i suck in zerk and <laughs> the only thing i'm good at is ganking um and even then you know i don't know whether i'm gonna be leveling another non bad character because oh my god so stressful <laughs> blackwater blade is very much stressful yeah and you know it's it's really i think it's really working really well with that kind of system where you know you don't have really quite have responsibilities but you do feel recognized for what you're doing and some of them probably will become officer one day but they don't need to be officer to be recognized exactly their incentives yeah i like that idea so and i'm pretty sure i can give you all permissions to hand these out too so you can like you know go into their uh so the book profile or whatever and add a little trophy to them so if you just see nice. them out, if you see anybody out there doing awesome just give them a nice little reward i think it'd be fun to uh look at everybody's profiles and see how many little gold stars they have also make some awards like a freaking draw them out and you know create some that'd be nifty Uh, but that does seem like a good idea to everybody. Sounds good to me. I think it's a good idea. Probably just need a little bit more thoughts into how, how to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, so we could either do it just, you know, randomly, like where we'll be leading an EMP group on a normal ass day and see somebody doing something awesome, take note of it and give them, give them a freaking star on the website. Or we can do it like uh, at certain events, so it's more organized. Like uh, if they're at Paint the Map Red Weekend, you see them do awesome, do that. Or if they're at PVP, give them like event camp. trophies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think there should be like behavioral trophies, event trophies, um, and then like sportsmanship trophies or something like that. Because I also yeah. want to reward people for being like positive in zone or you know coming in and like Kadatsu the other day when she pulled someone aside in zone and talked to them and. I would give a trophy for that to encourage more people yeah. to be able to do that. Seems like a nice little idea, I think. But, um, I think that's pretty much it, though. So let's just run over things one more time. Uh, PV boot camps. Uh, I think most of our officers attended one, although uh, some still need to. I'll worry about one after I'm done with my my uh, tutorial project. Oh yeah, yeah, you're good on that. How's that going, by the way? Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, awesome. Yep. Sometimes I'll be in game, but I won't be in Teamspeak, and that's just because when I'm in Teamspeak, it also records everyone's conversation. Oh, yeah. So I'm often in game, but not in team speak, just so that way I can uh, get some game footage without you know everybody talking in the background. So uh, were we wanting to do combat boot camps as well, or are we just going to stick with the PvP boot camps, not like a teach user basically joined channel. actual combat shit? Hey, Vavik. This is uh, still the meeting, though. Will you go up into the other channels, please? User left your channel. Thank you. Well, combat would probably be a little bit too hard to organize, like, right away. But it's not a bad idea at the end if we wanted to try to incorporate it at some point. To yeah, improve can, upon. Yeah, we can do it in, like, a Fairy Craft Thursdays and shit. Uh, which... Um, we'll pause out here, but um, I think we need more people more involved in the theory craft Thursdays because they're kind of dying out. It sounds like you're trying to teach people how to play two different ways with a group and as an individual. 
Well, I think uh, individual combat is really important too, because whenever you get ganked, there's so many people that get ganked, and like that's really important to me, at least. Yeah, but sometimes it doesn't matter one. how good of a player you are. If there's five people, y you know, you're just going to get zerged, mm -hmm. and that's just how it is. Um, it's not because you're better or anything like that. Like, Seafowl has like 15 people on him, he still dies. Well, yeah, but um, in your PvP boot camp, so you talk about a. Uh, the use of AoEs and shit? Yeah, and synergies. Okay. So you talk about, like, the Zerg combat, right? Only in accordance to the way that the... that it would benefit the keep tactics. Gotcha. So I would say, like, AoE these down, single target, pick these guys first, take out the menders first, you know, things of that nature. And then give, like, a one or two sentence blip on recommended tactics or moves that anybody can apply and use okay good um oh on a on a note for that were we wanting to give like a uh, general um build layouts or anything it's not required at all but like you know recommended builds no i think especially with the patch coming in next in about a month less than a month uh, a lot of stuff's gonna change yeah so I think putting efforts into putting a build out right now would be ridiculous. Although helping people, especially in keeping in communication with what we discover when the new patch comes out, I think that's important. And I think that should probably be the focus of our next meeting is kind of pulling together what information we've learned about uh, IC so that we can help distribute that uh, the best way possible to our guildies. After the, uh, after the next big patch drops, we should definitely have a kind of like a training session just going over all the changes that were made yeah yeah i agree uh who's all reading up on that too because uh, me yeah. i played on the test server too uh, there's a lot yeah. of cool stuff yeah yeah i just got my pps it's downloaded really really more difficult now yeah it is the, even the dungeons like are the more blockies. difficult the damage is totally nerfed yeah because you don't do, you're yeah, not nearly your enemies, as powerful yeah, especially PvEs. And shields tend to be what everybody's stacking, because shields are like OP as fuck right now in the new They're patch. They're nerving the, PV, the, the shield again on the next update. That's good. Um, uh, wait, no, no, no. As They're in on the next update the to update 7. Yeah, they're they're thinking of okay. like changing, like healing ward was yeah. apparently not was ridiculous. scaling correctly. Healing ward was off the friggin' hook, and you couldn't kill anybody People as long get, as they like, had it on. People would get like shield from yeah. it. It was, it was bullshit. It was ridiculous. On the advantage, though, it means you had an 18k shield, but then everybody's just out there in IC not killing or taking five or six people to kill one person. Yep. Or 10 on the healer. 10 on the healer. <laughs> uh, I, I would say if anybody doesn't have the PTS download, go ahead and download it. Because I kind of want to get everybody on there and get... Uh, familiar with it so we can all talk I about it. I think we should create an event, which means we would have to start planning for it now so people can yeah. download it, but yeah. if we yeah, do it an event... Yeah, three days to download because yeah. I kept opening up my game and shit. <laughs> you can download them both at the same... or download it while you're playing. Oh, that, 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 it just means it. it's slower. Yeah. Especially like, for those who don't have, like, a very good internet connection. No, I, I paused mine. I was like, fuck it. I want to be able to New play. Zealand. <laughs> we hear you, New Zealand. We hear you. <laughs> But I would love to do like a guild night and just have everybody in and run it around in uh in the new stuff because it is really cool and you can create a vet fourteen to run around with so you can test out builds before you even you know get to that point and then if you have a vet fourteen already it automatically scales you to vet fifteen and there's already people who have vet sixteens in there looking at end game stuff so it's a great way to kind of see where you're headed and and you know anticipate what you're gonna need and try and get it together before the end of the month. And if you're like me, you can try to kind of replicate your build, what it would be like at that 14, see if there's anything you need to change. Yeah. Alright, um... Then, uh, the tribunal applicants who don't want to fill the forms, just, um, make a post about them in the admin form. Somewhere in there, I don't really know where yet, but post about them. And if they get the required recommendations, we'll go ahead and promote them that way. You know, some people just don't. But um, we're still doing um, required forms for uh, lower ranks. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we, that makes sense. 
Do we still want to do it for a depth two? Yeah. Yeah. I would want to do it for a depth. If you can make it past the depth, then I think at that point you're worthy of a recommendation, but Adept should have to fill it out because then we can't tell the difference between players. And everybody's yeah. been able to at least make it to Adept. Like those who I would recommend for a tribunal are all Adepts already. Um. Other than that, the next uh, next meeting should be on the 15th. So we should be able to join back up. Anybody, if you can, uh, if you're interested in researching the patch notes for the new patch, um, if you can bring content to that meeting, because then we should start being able to roll it out after the 15th. We can start rolling out new patch content. I think it's important that we're all informed first, so that if anybody comes and asks us a question or something like that, that we'll be able to give them good information that's communicated between everybody. Yeah, and I'll also be uh, creating a, quite a few events here, so uh, hopefully us playing ARC can uh, come focus our efforts, you know? Come play some... You can have the best game. of both worlds. I'm going to be working on playing both games at the same time. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I, I love the game, but... I'll yeah. say this, I will make an attempt to come back to ESL on events. Yeah, events, events would be nice. I'll try not to make them, like, every day. <laughs> uh, what about I'm just a... an addict. I'm sorry. When I get into yeah, a game, I'm addicted. I Dude, feel it you. It is addicting. But, um... I think we all empathize entirely with that motive. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about weekly events? Would anybody be opposed to that? I think a weekly event should be fine. But um, I just I have hate no problem with that. people like offline for a week. That killed me. Yep. But if you do that, it would have to be either for me personally, either a yeah. Friday or a Saturday your time, because when I get home, you know, Monday to yeah, Friday yeah. my time, it's like midnight for you guys. So yeah, the and then earliest. there's like so, late night events. Wait, what time yeah. is it right now for you? Uh, one twenty-two. In the morning or p.m.? P.m. P.m. Okay. I think right if you do Friday time, nights, right? that's probably good. Because we had a lot of people show up last Friday, or last yeah. night. So if you just do the events on Friday night, that should be fine. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I think I could break myself away from art for one Friday night a week. There you go. <laughs> that'd be fun. I'll probably suck, though. Oh, we another, miss you guys. Another thing I wanted <laughs> um, to um, talk about about Ark. Um, it's been brought up about making how so the multi-game guild. Uh, How's Arca? <laughs> yeah, no, it's no, no. it's Saltwater Blade. Yeah, I House, think that would be a good House idea. It's House Arca and Saltwater Blade. Yeah. I think we got our hands cut out just trying to focus on the ESO content. Think so. I agree with that more or less. I mean, it's yeah. not a bad idea, but we're just kind of spread a little bit too thin for now. Like not at this point, but right. maybe, a maybe in the future. Yeah. After we get boot camp down and uh, yeah, we figure yeah. out some more other sustainable stuff. players, gotcha. people we can rely on and depend. But not expanding the guild to a different game has been like a thing of mine. I didn't don't know if it's gonna be arc or not, but I don't know. Expanding the guild is something well, I want to do sometime I play in the, the future. Sims, so there's <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, let's go play the Sims. <laughs> I'm all up for well, that. Has anyone been a member of a guild called Goshkir? No. Uh, it's originally an Irish guild, but they do exactly that. They've been going for like 10, 15 years, I think now, and I was a member. And they were on Dark Age of Camelot, World of uh, Warcraft, uh, Warhammer Online... You name it, they've been on it, and they're still developing. I mean, they've got... You yeah, know, I know guilds that'll do like a members. migration where they'll take everybody from one game and move them to the next game. <laughs> and there's also some and guilds just that go... do like a game of the months and shit. Yeah, that too. But, 
Yeah, I'm these actually guys, in a... These guys get invited to alphas and betas because of their guild and the groups that oh, they can shit. bring. And which is really good. But as well as that, um, they still have people who play the other games. So, like, um, they have people playing Albion Online, for example, or there are people in Camelot Unchained right now, as well as people in um, Guild Wars and, and, and ESO. So, yeah, I think that's something to definitely to aspire to. Just yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually in a, in a guild that's like that right now. Uh, called Neon Grind. Yeah, Neon Grind. Yeah, they play uh, like four, five, six games, like right now. But it's also very different. Like these are people who are interested in end game stuff. Most of them play trials. They do DSA, fat DSA, yeah. fat PVP. I just felt that if we if you are like in Blackwater Blade, we are we are more a little bit more casual than that. Yeah, that that's, we're that's gonna attract too. the different kind of people. Like when I, I play with like... these guys, they're really, really yeah. hardcore. Yeah, I, I was, I was I gonna love say, love our accepting guild. I love it, but I don't know. Maybe we're moving past that. Well, I sad, feel kind of. like we can't even balance between PVE and PVP content very well as yeah. a guild. I agree. So expanding to other games is asking for like a world of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. I would, I would, I would rather us like look into the PVE aspect of this game or even like bad PVP. Yeah. Because you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm, I'm really sick of leveling a new character to level twenty five so that I could be effective, on that, on, on, on Blackwater Blade. Oh, come be a noob with me. <laughs> I, I, I have a DK that I will be leveling, but I think that's the last one. Just come be a noob. Well, well we're starting us. we're starting new characters too like the crew that i run right. with yeah so i think it will just all start together as like a whole noob yeah. zerg I, I have a new character too I think people maybe six. i'll make an event of it and just be like new yeah. character day yeah, new that'd be fun. wednesday new wednesday and then we could do it during our bring meetings. your noob to work day bring your noob to work day i love it But is there anything else that anybody would like to touch up on? Anything that needs to be brought up? I think that's everything that I wanted. All right. Anything else? Nothing? See some lights going. <laughs> but so okay. Yeah. Aelin, if you want to figure out PvE, uh, let me know because I, I'm really hooked on PvE right now. For whatever me reason. too. Oh my god, with the trials and, and everything, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. I love it. It's uh, yeah. so much fun. And I really want us to get to the point where we can actually just spend time and run them, like spend an hour or whatever and take all of our vets in and run through Hell or Citadel, get our gear, yeah. get um, the achievement. Poke me in TS when you're doing your next freaking trial. I want to come. For yeah. the guild that I'm in that does the trials, it's every Saturday at noon Pacific. Uh, They'll run mine, trials. Ew. Mine really? is Monday night. Yeah. Ew, oh, you like... do Monday night? Yeah. Training mm. run is Monday night. Oh, I want to yeah. run with you tomorrow or yeah, Monday. I'll, I can do Monday night, but freaking in the morning? Not it's up noon then. on Pacific, so <laughs> it's that's later for you. What? No, oh, it's noon. not. Two. Noon for <laughs> me <laughs> means it's two for you. <laughs> Whatever. I still have my time zones down. <laughs> but they run two they typically run two or three in a day so you can catch one of the second or third ones and I make announcements in guild about it what guild is it? it's the crimson moon oh. they're basically the house sotha of vet pvp so they take a lot of the new players and help train them and oh, they're pretty nifty. yeah they're, well, they're really, kind of like really all sweet. vet stuff yeah they're, they're all vet content they have their shit way more on lockdown than we do <laughs> Well, shit. I, I mean, I would like to get there because, to be honest, like, I feel like I'm missing a lot of endgame content right now, and I want to play them. Like, I see, yeah. yes, you can play it as a non-vet, but the items you get, you know, I want a V14 gear, you know, because I have two, I want one the V14 head. and one V10 right now. So I want yeah. them. I just want the colors. I feel like a house so that does have a purpose here, like non-vet though, like. 
We do. supposed to be the nun yeah. that oh, healed. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not denying on. that. I, well, we yeah, don't have I to think... specialize in just yeah, yeah. non-vet, though. Yep. Uh, do, we, do we not have to? Because like, that's what I feel like we have to. I don't know. I, I know your sister guild stuff probably is gone right now. But if you're interested, we can... Um, I don't know. I've, I've been in Neon Grind for only a little bit, but I've played with them a lot because I'm on House Redoran, which is their sister guild. Yeah. And we had a lot of fun together. Yeah, I have been... Yeah, I mean, like, I just need House Telvani now, and then I'll have all of the houses, except <laughs> two more. I should just have all of the guilds named after a house. Um, mm. But yeah, if, you, if you're if you interested, they, they run, they run, they run PvP um, every, very often, actually. Nine and nine I nine. know the people who are, who are running this, because I played with them really often on PvE. I don't know. I can check the. I can check the timing. They have one right now, actually. They have one running on every Saturday. They have one running, I think, every Tuesday or something. So you don't need to actually do vet content yourself. But you know, a lot of us have vet tunes right now. Um. Oh, maybe not a lot of us, but you know, substantial portion, su substantial minority have a vet tune, and I think at some point, you know. People are gonna be like me, not gonna want to start another character. Yeah. Because it's really tiring, and it felt like you're starting from zero every single time. Well, and we're all it? gonna be going from fourteen to sixteen as well, so. That is true, but that is still starting from fourteen and advancing to sixteen, not starting from one again. Fair point. It's progression, right? It's a lot of work building a character, playing through the game, the storyline. You got three different storylines. Yeah. PvP, a lot of different PvP servers. You got other end game content. If we're going to focus primarily on non vet server for PvP, then that would require us to just constantly create new tunes all the time. Yeah, and, and I, oh my god, the first 25 levels um, of, on my two characters. I basically have to spend doing like sky shot run in Cold Harbor when I was level three. User left Who the channel. heck do that? It's very stressful. Granted, that's because I don't want to be like a User shitty character. Is uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording because I think the meeting's pretty much done. Yep. Yeah, I think so.